Welcome to the Backyard Professor videos. I'm going to do a uh, another video on the Book of Mormon. The uh, Book of Mormon never ceases to amaze me at the issues that are involved with it and how it uh, it actually reflects an ancient background that is really quite pleasant to uh, discover. It's got some archaeological backgrounds to it that are extremely sensational. And it's unique in that it has parallels with the Dead Sea Scrolls in ways that are just simply amazing. And I want to share some of those parallels with you. I want to give you some ideas on why I believe the Book of Mormon is an ancient text and some of the discussions and arguments against it are extremely silly. <laughs> and, and, and so, in Hugh Nibley's book, The Prophetic Book of Mormon, this is a collection of numerous dozens of articles that he wrote on the Book of Mormon and published in various scholarly venues. This is by Deseret Book and Farms. Uh, John W. Welch is the editor. It's the collected works of Hugh Nibley, 1989. If you don't have this book, you're cheating yourselves. Uh, it's an enormous text. It's, it's just gigantic. It's 600 pages. It's pretty impressive stuff. In his new approaches to the Book of Mormon study, now this was an Improvement Era article series well, way back in the 1950s, so we're talking 50 years ago, and so far the information that he has has not been necessarily outdated so much as supported through more scholarly analysis. And he was the one that first broke ground in discussing several of the ancient parallels with the literatures of antiquity as archaeology discovers them, and as we read the information from the Lakish letters, the Mari letters, the Barcopa documents, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Gnostic texts in the early Christian materials, so on and so forth, it's pretty impressive to see that not only his ancient parallels, but the themes that he discovered in the Book of Mormon, they have become even more powerful through time. Now, now this is odd, because you would think that if, if it's a made-up text, if Joseph Smith just wrote it as pious fiction, <laughs> the one thing he wanted it to be is believed. You know, that's not how to write a bestseller is believe it. This theme of the Dead Sea Scrolls, exercised Hugh Nibley quite extensively, and rightly so. And in the la even in the last 25 years, some extensive studies and great strides, we are moving forward in getting a better understanding of just what do the Dead Sea Scrolls teach us about ancient Judaism, about early Christianity. What do the Dead Sea Scrolls teach us about the Scriptures? And pretty much... Every single theme about the Dead Sea Scrolls support the Book of Mormon. Now, that's quite a claim. When you stop and think about it, you say, yeah, no, wait a minute, you're really pushing the envelope. No, he's got some uh, interesting information that uh, I'm going to share with you today in his new approaches of Book of Mormon studies. I'm going to start on page 87 and share with you some ideas he had in, in what the scholarship was called the Thanksgiving Hymns in the Dead Sea Scrolls. On page 87, the, uh, the Thanksgiving Hymns are a great literary production. He says it's a literary composition, and it has real merit. This is telling us, this is helping us understand what were the sectaries doing out in the Judean desert getting away from the wickedness of Jerusalem. What were their beliefs? You can't discover this archaeologically by finding pieces of pottery, potsherds, ostraca. You can't find this by finding bits of 
bone. You can't discover a person's beliefs without a written document. That's why the archaeologists emphasize, and the historians, they emphasize the importance of the written document. With the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Thanksgiving hymns, we have a spectacular literary document. And it contains hardly a single original line. There's nothing. This isn't. This isn't creative writing 101 that the ancient Jews were doing. What they did with the Thanksgiving hymns, these songs are as if woven from quotations of the Old Testament. The style closely imitates the style of the Psalms in the Old Testament, as well as other poetic writings of the Old Testament. The scholarship has demonstrated without question that biblical reminiscences abound in this composition. Quotation, quotations shine out at every moment. What the composer of the Thanksgiving hymns did is they had their scriptures with them, and they would pick parts of the scripture here, parts of the scripture there, and they would weave it all together to read, kind of like a Sunday sermon, to the congregation. But this isn't original writing, this isn't creative writing. It's simply plagiarizing from the Old Testament. And I use that word deliberately because that's the accusation used against the Book of Mormon. Now the scholarship of the Dead Sea Scrolls has demonstrated, I believe, very powerfully, very wonderfully, how the Dead Sea Scrolls help us appreciate the Old Testament. It helps us appreciate the Masoretic text, the Hebrew behind the documents, the Hebrew of the Old Testament. It helps us appreciate the Septuagint and its translation, and how between the Hebrew and the Greek there are changes, differences in style, emphasis, meaning, understanding, etc. But if the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Bible scholars have absolutely demonstrated this, they give us incredibly interesting support for the Bible. And yet all they do is plagiarize the Bible. Now, I'm using a modern criticism here on purpose because the Book of Mormon, Nephi, for example, to use the classic example, well, Abinadi in the uh, Book of Alma as well, even Jesus in Third Nephi, the Book of Mormon is accused of simply plagiarizing from the Bible. It, as Mark Twain said, it smouches from the New Testament and no credit given. <laughs> the Book of Mormon is a thief. It's a culprit. It's a nasty, stupid, clumsy pastiche where Joseph Smith simply took this part of the Bible and that part of the Bible, clunkily put it all together, and called it Scripture. It's a plagiarism. It's phony. It's fiction. They'll make all kinds of accusations. But you notice the double standard here? The Dead Sea Scrolls support the Bible because they quote the Bible. And if it supports the Bible, then the Book of Mormon, using the exact same literary technique and style of utilizing the scriptures for its own purposes also supports the Bible. The Dead Sea Scrolls are a genuine archaeological discovery that prove the Bible, so to speak. I don't like using that word prove because that's a very subjective thing. Two people can look at the same evidence and come to diametrically opposite conclusions. Just exactly like two scholars can read a Hebrew text and translate it completely differently. They do it with Egyptian, they do it with the Old Babylonian, they do it with the Akkadian, they do it with the Aramaic. I mean, it's all over the world of scholarship. All you have to do is start reading this stuff. So on the one hand, if the Dead Sea Scrolls are a genuine 
use of the scriptures. And that authenticates the scriptures and shows that the Dead Sea Scrolls are actually authentic.